Hello everyone, this is Colossius and welcome to our topic on four key ideas for perfect play. Now granted, there is no actual perfect play in Go. However, these four ideas, upon mastering them, will get you infinitely close. But of course, there's no easy way to master them either, but the, I'm going to give you the step-by-steps of how to improve each of these ideas and what these ideas basically are. All right, so our first idea is when you go to place a stone, you should have you should go through these four steps. And the first step is make a goal. What is your goal? How do you know what your goal is? If you don't have a goal, then you have no idea what you're doing. You're just placing a stone just to place it or just following your opponent or just playing blindly. If you don't have a goal, then you can't win the game. You can't make your moves effective. So the first thing you do for each and every single move, so that means you should be doing this like 200 or more times in your game, you should be giving yourself a goal. And the goal should be uh, something that uh, basically either fix a weakness or attack an opponent's weakness, gain something, attack something, uh, fix something, or go play a big move, or something like that. And the classy approach is the approach that actually was made to give you those goals, is to direct your play in the proper direction and get the proper direction of play, the proper ideas to think about, and just get the entire mindset uh, thinking about the correct stuff. So the classy approach is a method that was already created in order to help you get those goals and master those goals. But with only the classy approach, it's not gonna be good enough because you have to answer those goals correctly and make sure your move does that. So the first thing to think about is what is my goal? Your goal should normally be to fix weaknesses first, uh, attack opponent's weaknesses, if it's uh, Sente, attack opponent's weaknesses and gain profit for free, and then get to those big moves. And if you can get to those big moves, then you will be very fast paced and get a lot of territory very quickly. All right, so let's go on to topic two. It is instincts. Your instincts are basically what's going to tell you where to look at. So you, you have a goal, you're saying, my goal is I need to fix my group. Okay, what moves do I think about when I go to fix this group? Is it a one point jump? Is it a, a nobi? Is it a two space extension along the side? What moves are possible here that I think are possible? And that's where your instincts come into play. Your instincts will give you several options to think about. And here's the biggest mistake that players make at this step. They give themselves several moves and they just look at one and they think if this one works, then I'm gonna play it. However, that is a big mistake. You should give yourself multiple moves to think about every single turn. You should always be thinking what moves are possible here. It could be a one point jump, it could be a two space extension, it could be a tanuki, it could be uh, all kinds of different moves. Just give yourself at least a minimum of three moves to think about. Sometimes it'll go down as two if you're in a very tight area, but normally you should have at least a minimum of three. Sometimes you can have six to seven or even eight ideas. Uh, but uh, of course some ideas will be better than others. And actually there may be times where all of your ideas are wrong and you'll have to come up with something brand new and that's uh, that will require creativity but uh, for for now if you can just master your instincts and give yourself multiple moves to think about you will have more moves to think about now how to improve your instincts how to improve where you should be looking because as you all know pros can read very very fast though they still take a while to read they can read a very large sequence very accurately very quickly and they'll read all kinds of very fantastic moves and pick the absolute best one uh, for us, we may be thinking, oh yeah, we can read a few moves too, but if we're reading the completely wrong thing, then it's kind of pointless and a waste of time. So to improve our instincts, we review our games and we review pro games. Pro games will always give us new ideas to think about, new uh, ways to approach uh, dealing with a situation or to new king sooner or something like that, new shapes. Uh, shapes are very big in pro games and Josekis for that matter. Uh, and when you review your own games, you should look at the result. If you you had a goal for a certain move and you your instinct said to play this certain move and you played it and you look at the result, judge that result because it's a lot easier to say in hindsight, was this move or idea or strategy good or bad? In hindsight, it's very easy to do that because you can just uh, look and see what the result was. So when you review your games, you can do that. You can say, okay, this is the result 
from my idea, my move. Was this result good or bad? And that will tell you if your, your move was good or bad overall. And then you can use that to improve your instincts and the next two steps. All right, so the next step, after you have multiple moves to think about, you have to read. This is the most obvious answer you could come up with, but also the most commonly missed solution for many players. I don't know how many of my students think they are reading, but they are not, because reading is a lot more than just looking at it for five to 10 seconds. If you are playing moves than five to 10 seconds, you are not reading this thoroughly enough. There's no way you can read every possible variation that is possible in a local situation in 10 seconds. Pros can't even do that. Even the best player in the world cannot read a board in 10 seconds. If you looked at even the Lee Sedol versus AlphaGo game, many players in the chat were going crazy because he had 60 seconds by Naomi and every single turn he would be place his stone at the 59th second. That is because he's using every second given to him to read as much as and as far as possible. And even then he would think that 60 seconds in overtime is really, really fast. Uh, but he's taking as many seconds as he can, and that was just in Bio Yomi. But many players online, they use five to 10 seconds, sometimes even two seconds, because they think, oh, this move's obvious, let's connect the Atari. Is that connection worth it? Is it necessary? Did you count it? Did you see if there's other moves that are possible to play? Did you actually read it before you just connected? And the many players think that, oh, I'm trying to stretch my time or I'm trying to make my time last. I will tell you, no, do not make your time last. Do not save your time. Do not conserve your time. Do not stretch your time. You should be using your time. Make sure that you get end up in Bioyomi just like every single game. I don't care if you have 15 minutes and you're in Bioyomi in the first 50 moves. Likely you will have a better position in your, than your opponent as long as you are reading. Now when you, are, uh, when you improve your reading, you will of course read more efficiently, uh, which means to read faster and more accurately. So you'll use less time, but still read the same amount. So you'll be able to save time doing that later, but don't worry about that right now. Time is there to be used. If you think you have to read something out, take the time to read it out. If you lose games on time, then uh, don't worry about it just because, or if you end up in Mayomi very fast, don't worry about it because you need to practice reading. I doubt anyone can read perfectly. So there's always a way to improve your reading. So what I would recommend for this is, of course, do co-problems. Uh, and when you're reading, try to read as much as possible and push yourself just a little bit, maybe two moves more than, two or three moves more than your normal, and also read every single option your instincts gave you. This means if you gave yourself seven options to think about, read each of those options, look at the results, and try to find the weaknesses in each of the variations. What are the results of each single move that you consider? And sometimes moves will have multiple results. Which one do you think will actually happen? And you look at those results. Which one do you think your opponent will try to force you into or something? Uh, try to figure out what the truest results in your mind will become. And of course, you will not be able to do this perfectly, but do it to the best of your ability. And that's the best way to improve your reading. And then when you review your game later, you can see, did I read correctly or did I read incorrectly? What was the actual result and what did I miss? And then you can learn from that for next time. But you're never going to improve your reading if you don't start practicing. And for those of you who are in Bioyomi, make sure, make sure, make sure that you are using as much of your Bioyomi period as possible. If you have 30 seconds, don't place a stone in five seconds. If you have 30 seconds, use at least 25 seconds. I would say if you don't want to play at the 29th second because you're worried about losing the period, that's fine. At least use 25 seconds though. If you can master it and get up to like 28 or 20, uh, 27, 28 seconds before you place this stone, then even better. You give yourself a couple more seconds to read every single turn. And even if, even if you know absolutely that this move is something I have to play, and you know within five, 10 seconds that this is the vital point of this entire group, it's gonna die if I don't play it. That means you have 20 more seconds to read everything else on the board or count or judge or look at other stuff. Use your time. The time is there to be used, not to be saved, not to be stretched. It's there to be used. And if you have Biomi, then use it. Even if you know the move, you can still use it to look at something else and that will save you time later. 
So use your time. And if you are in a difficult situation, you can't read it in 30 seconds, try sacrificing a biome. That is also a common strategy. Sacrifice a biome period to fully understand the situation. Sometimes I'll even sacrifice a biome period just to count the board because I can count in around 40 to 50 seconds, but that's more than a biome period. So I will sacrifice an entire period just to count the boards just so I know what, what's going on. When I have a better understanding, I'll know more or less uh, where I should be on the board, where, where do, uh, what's my goal? It's a lot easier to find a goal when you understand what's happening on the board and sometimes sacrificing a biome period for that is worth it. And so this will take us into our fourth idea, which is judgment. So you first get a goal, you say, this is my goal. I need to find a way to do this, like fix my weak group, uh, attack my opponent or get to that big move. Then you use your instincts. Your instincts will tell you where to look. Then you read each of those moves that you gave yourself. And then after you read and have a result for each of those moves, you use your judgment and uh, you judge each of those moves. Is one better than the other? How do you judge it? You count, you look at the influence, you look at who gets sente. And then judgment will pretty much separate uh, one player from another. Even if the players are of equal skill level, whoever can judge them more and more accurately will figure out which variations better for them or worse for them. And whoever f completely understands the board better is probably gonna be the stronger player more times than not. So all things equal, if whoever has better judgment will win the game just because they're able to pick better variations than their opponent because you gave yourself multiple options to think about and you found the best one with your judgment. Judging the result is vital when you read because you have to compare it to your other variations that you also read. If you just find one move, you read it and you say, this looks good enough, you're only going to be uh, at that level where you only gave yourself one option. But if you give yourself multiple options, you read those options thoroughly, and then you judge each of those options as accurately as possible, as accurately as you can then you will find yourself making much, much better decisions and much more thought, well thought out decisions than your opponents or than you used to and you'll find yourself improving very fast, very rapidly due to the fact that all of your moves are becoming so much more effective. Now, I will say while you're learning this, it is more important to actually master these steps rather than winning the games at first. I would rather you take time to give yourself more clock time or whatever, take time, play games, don't worry about winning or losing, just make sure you're giving yourself a goal each turn, uh, you, give, you give yourself multiple options to think about, you read those options and you judge those options. Once you master doing these things, then you can start working on improving them. But if you're not even doing these four steps, then there's no way you can play perfectly or play near perfectly or make every single move uh, spot on for its proper direction of play or most accurate reading. It's really hard to improve your game if you are playing moves that aren't you're not thinking about, if you're just playing moves without thinking it thoroughly. Every single move in Go is vital. Every single move matters and every single move should be of positive value. And that will separate the strong players from the weak is if you can make every single move matter more and more and more. So if you can master these four, just thinking about these four steps, it will already improve your game. And then you can go into each of these steps individually and try and improve them with study, reviewing games, doing problems, watching lectures. All of these things will help each of these steps in their own right. For example, if you watch a lecture and, you're, and a pro tells you this position's worth this much and this one's worth this much, that will automatically improve your judgment because your judgment will now improve for that position or positions that are like that one because now you'll have a new understanding of, okay, uh, someone stronger than me says this position's worth this. So do I agree with them? If yes, then, oh, then that's probably uh, a way a little bit different than what I thought. So now I know for the future reference that when I judge this position or when I read it, this position's worth this. And that will improve your judgment. Go problems will improve your reading and practice reading will improve your reading. Just even if you don't do go problems, if you are reading in your game every single game, your reading will improve leaps and bounds. Your instincts will improve by watching lectures, reviewing pro games, or having people suggest new ideas by getting game reviews or something like that. Uh, your goal will improve just by uh, seeing just by looking at the classy approach and saying, did I accomplish these steps? Is was this goal worth it? Uh, did I defend myself in time? And then when you get game reviews, you'll actually have someone critique you on, did you answer? Did your goal was your goal worth it at this stage? And did you accomplish your goal? 
if you can ask them to say, my goal for this move was to do this. Does this move do it or does it not? And does it do it effectively? Is there a better way to do it? Or was I just completely wrong in general? Uh, so game reviews and uh, w game reviews will really help you with that as well. Af asking people for advice or asking stronger players, did I accomplish my goal and was this goal correct and was this the best move for that goal? That will really help you improve your goal and your instincts to accomplish that goal as well. So anyway, that is my four key ideas for theoretically perfect play. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.